Okay, we're going to look at the Bohr model of the atom. This relies on four basic postulates. Namely, first, that we have circular orbits. In that, we have a nucleus with electrons going around in circles. So we'll draw little circles here. Of course, those of us who know some quantum mechanics know this isn't the whole story. Oh, here's another, another one. And that's okay. We know it's not the whole story. The Bohr model is not the final answer to everything. But it is a good place to start. So circular orbits. Two, only certain orbits are allowed. Which is to say, we can be here, we can be here, we can't be here. Okay, now this is a good start. Now we're going to say that these have different energy. And spectra, you've got to remember, that was what how the early 20th century, how the experimenters were looking at the atom. They're looking at the spectra, the light given off when atoms, when electrons change levels. So spec the, the spectra has energy due to change in energy. I'll say, just say HF. So the change in energy from here to here, the electron jumps one way or the other. Now that change in energy determines the spectra. And Bohr's real insight, and this is all this was all very good. Crown jewel is that this is all this is determined by angular momentum. Momentum quantization, which is to say the angular momentum quantized, the angular momentum is quantized in certain amounts, in certain set amounts, which is what makes um, quantum theory different from other theories. So, in order to do this, Okay, we're going to want to look at, so first we'll start with quantization. So we have a, here's a nucleus. I'll say that's the orbital radius, the electron. We're thinking about these like little tiny planets. Once again, we know that's not the full story in quantum mechanics, but we're not getting there yet. Okay, so that's the radius. The regular momentum would be mass times velocity. So, the angular momentum would be R cross MV, the right angles, MVR. Okay, we're going to say that is quantitized to N H bar. I'll write that a little larger. MVR equals N H bar. Now, in fact, you'll notice if in terms of de Broglie waves, this is a whole number of, of de, Broglie, de Broglie matter waves. So if we have n equals 1, we have one full wavelength going around. So it doesn't interfere with itself. Okay, so that's our first one. We're also going to use the uh, formula for force. So, those are my notes. Okay, formula for force. Know that the force right here, we have the outward so called centripetal, centrifugal force. That's going to be 
m v squared over r, and we'll have the inward electrostatic force of k e squared over r squared. We're going to solve for the radius, so-called, well, the radius, so at, the, at its lowest level, so it's called the so-called Bohr radius. So, I'm going to solve this for, let's see, so this for velocity, plug it into here. So I'll take this, get n h bar over m r equals v. Plug this into here, we get m v squared, which is now n h bar over m r squared over r equals k e squared over r squared. Okay, now we want to solve for r. From here it's a matter of simplifying the situation. So, simplify this to say, um, m, n squared, h bar squared, over m squared, r squared, r cubed, equals, k e squared over r squared. Now I'm going to solve for r. I get r sub m equals r, so I'll get n squared h bar squared M divided by K E squared and yes, that's right. Okay, so called now if we make this say this is N equals 1, so these are all different levels. We have uh, back to here, we have n equals 1, n equals 2, and we can go out further and further and further. We can make a n equals 3 if we wanted. n equals 3, and so, so on and so forth. Okay, so we have this. This is the radius. Now let's calculate the energy. Okay, blank sheet of paper. Now that we have the radius, let's, let's copy that down. So we have that. R equals n squared h bar squared over m k e squared. Um, just so you have it, the Bohr radius is n equals 1. So we have h squared m k e squared. Okay. Now, the difference in energy was, uh, or rather we can write the energy it as the kinetic energy and the electrostatic energy. One half mass velocity squared minus, notice it's a minus, that means it has to take extra energy in order to get us out of this, our uh, bonded situation so we can, electron can fly free, otherwise it's stuck where it is. 
requires positive energy to get out. So the electrostatic energy must be negative. Okay. Now, we know we solved for V a moment ago. We can plug it, uh, likewise, we can plug in for R. So, um, the fastest way to do this is to take the force equation, actually. Force equation, remember we had K E squared over R squared equals MV squared over R. Let's multiply both of those times R. We get, scratch that out, scratch that out, plug that in over here. We get one half K E squared over R minus K E squared over R. And we get, so we get energy as being one half minus one half k e squared over r. You know what r is though? r is this. So we're going to take this and write energy is k e squared divided by 2 and the whole, the whole thing's negative now we're going to write in r r is n squared h bar squared and divide this by m, or we multiply it on top either way. It's, it's equivalent. K e squared. Or if we can rewrite that, we have k e squared squared mass or 2 h bar. 1 over n squared. Now I write it this way because if we want to get the difference in energy, then what we'll want to write is difference in energy for spectra. We have K E squared squared M over two H bar. And we have I'm going to have one over N squared. And I'll have initial. I better have final and initial. This is where we get the Rydberg formula, where this is the Rydberg constant. Okay.